So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start down low, and then we're gonna work our way up to the top. And in between, I'm gonna show you what I did and why things are looking the way they are. But let's kind of do this in reverse timeline. First of all, see that odd shape right there? Grass looks really dark, speckled, chicken pox. Maybe a little bit over here where my footprints are. Nice and dark. What about here? Yellow. Very dark and long right back there. Kind of weird things happening. Over there, consistent, dark. There's actually a, a line where you can see the grass is longer. About right there. Everything over there, great shape. Over here, chicken pocked, maybe a little yellow. The green itself hasn't been mowed in a week, maybe a little bit longer. I've uh, been just sitting here letting it grow out. Nothing has been cut in here. There's little evidence of tests laying around. Nothing has been edged or even mowed on the main body of the lawn in a week or more, maybe about 10 days. So it's getting really long. It's nice and dark here. I got some weird stripes going right over there. Very dark, very thick, beautiful. Maybe a couple of weird stripes over here. Weird stripes over here. Weird stripes over here. Kind of yellow right here. Why? Let me show you. So let's talk about those stripes back there for a second. Um, as you can see, I put that out with a very, very crappy drop spreader. And I put a half pound of in down on this side. I put a full pound down over there. And the idea was to see how the grass responded over a certain amount of time. Now, we are coming up on almost four weeks with nice consistent growth. It's looking great, but also at the same time, it was good to show what happens when you do what versus what. Now, on the main body of the lawn, it's only had a quarter pound of in, and I kind of screwed that up. Okay, so, see right there? See those stripes? Those stripes shouldn't be there and wouldn't normally be there. However, the day I decided to start running these sort of parallel tests, I, I had to do something, and I quickly pumped furred out through my irrigation system really way higher than I should have. And these are the straight and direct lines from the irrigation as it came through. Now, I haven't tried to fix this, but when I was recalibrating my sprayers, I was doing it in different areas over here and I sort of neglected this. So the rest of it ended up pretty consistent, nice and dark green. I mean, where it reaches down there you can see the line where everything is a different color because of where the sprinkler hits. Now, if you look right here, you can see an extra dark green section. I did have crossover into this other test area, which is why that got really, really super dark. But what I've done here is a quarter pound of liquid, a half pound of granular, and a full pound of granular over there so that we could really see the color difference and the length at which it's going to stick around. Now, different angles, different light, different everything. Looking across here right now, you can see that one pound section stands out really, really strong. The biggest difference is not necessarily the darkness of the color from if we compared grass blades. The grass is growing really super fast there, twice as fast as what's next to it, which is growing twice as fast as what's next to that over there. So it's kind of stepped up, which gives you a shading. But then the lines in between kind of give you a little bit better idea and it contrasts it out where the drop spreader didn't, well, where the operator didn't quite hit things exactly right. Now right here behind me, if you were standing on the lawn, the difference in the color between this quarter pound section and that full pound section isn't really very noticeable. From a, from a growth standpoint it is, but from a color standpoint it's not. See down here. I mean, this is probably the longest any of you have ever seen my grass. It needs to be cut, needs to be mowed, but I'm just waiting it out. 
measuring the growth rate week over week. And then we're gonna see how long these colors last because I am keeping any other furt off of my upper section. So down here, this quarter pound that was run is about a month old. The upper level over there is about three weeks old. And prior to that, as I'd said before in previous videos, I had totally been starving everything out. So three different cool season grasses, getting three different application rates. And right now we're looking at longevity, color, and ultimately what we're gonna find out is cost in this application and, and really get a good idea of what FERT does what under what circumstances. Now, look at the growth rate here. See, if I, it's gonna be hard in this sort of, you know, two-dimensional plane, I suppose. But the grass here is so tall compared to just these little sections where it didn't get hit, right? So this would still be, while it made a very minor benefit of getting the furt, the concentration that went out caused these ripples like this through this very direct line that I have where the sprinkler water straight up and takes a 90 and you could see it where it cut like that. Well, when I started to see that showing up, I made some changes to the way this stream is working to get a little bit better distribution. And I'm not gonna talk about that because I'm not supposed to, but this now kind of evened everything up. Between here and here though, see how this mushroom is? This section right through here, because I was recalibrating everything, was getting more of a benefit than here. So that's why you're gonna see these sort of strips and stripes. Let me tell you how you fix that, just so you know nobody would ever have concern about fertigation. It's the same as this behind me. Drop spreader is not a great way to spread furt. It's just not. It was the best way I could go to get consistent lines over 500 square feet. That's why that went back there. So we're seeing where the wheel lines were and, and you know a very direct application. Now that was perfectly measured out. So it's the right rate, but you're gonna get this kind of faded. I didn't wanna use my edge guard because I felt like it wasn't going to give me in such a small space, I wasn't really gonna get what I needed to. So that's why that's like that. This is the same thing. Fertilizer goes down, highly concentrated in an area, and it doesn't have a lot of mobility. So that's why we have that. See in here, now a few weeks ago, I had a burn line in there that's already filled back in. But you can see that the deer have been up here. They really like this. They've been eating all through here. But so, there you go. Missed a spot. This was kind of a dividing line, so I intended to miss a spot. But it was hard to get such a low amount of furt to feed. But it was really hard to get a, such a low amount of furt out of that drop spreader to do this over here. Uh, because it was a 16%, I mean, there was only like one and a half pounds of total material to have to come out through a drop spreader in a small 500 square foot zone. If I'd done it over a much bigger area, it would have been a hell of a lot easier to control, but you know, live and learn, right? 